Hi, you're watching my channel, Cloud Busted. Oh, what's going on, you guys? So, I'm getting a bit more work done on the race cloud. I'll show you what I got so far. So, if you take a look, looks like it's sitting up a little bit high. That's just because there's no batteries or electronics, but that's going to be about ride height right there. So, I've been cranking on this thing, and that's because of the CNC mill I just picked up. Really speeds things up a lot compared to making them on a manual machine. CNC is way better, it's way more accurate. I could just run a program, make the parts. So that's awesome. So let's take a closer look at this thing. So overall, it's pretty simple. If you watch any of the earlier videos I did on this truck, you'll see I made my own steering brackets right here. Let's put the servo on top of the axle housing. That way I could run the factory bumper and steering linkage because I've had great luck with this. As long as this servo saver is set properly, like you don't crank it down and put too much spring tension, that thing will never break. And if you look closely at the chassis, right down here there's a couple bends. There's one, two, three bends. So that way, everything clears. All the servos clear, full articulation, right in there. Even at full twist, nothing ever hits. It's close, but it never hits. And that's because if you take a look at these lower rails, as they bend up, they also bend out, and that gives clearance for the servo and everything. So that's part of the reason why there's enough room to just barely clear all the steering linkage. I still have a couple more bars to put in the chassis, like in this area. Right here, I might add one up there. Probably should be fine just like that. But there is a little bit of flex in this thing. If I grab it right now without those in there, I can flex just a tiny bit. So if this chassis were to fail, it would probably be right there. I don't think it would be a problem, but I'll add those braces in just in case. So let's take a look at the electronics. So let's run a brushless motors. These are Trinity X-Factor RevTech motors. They're 13 and a half turn. ESCs, which are going to mount up here, are just hobby wing 120 amps. I think they're 120. Yeah, 120 amp. This would be perfect. Enough room for the receiver. It'll be right there. It'll be running dual 2S batteries. This is the cool part. So if you take a look right here, got just enough room to sneak the batteries in. So both batteries fit nicely in that lower cradle. So as you can see, the more weight, the lower it sits. So with those motors and those batteries in stock gearing, this thing should be pretty peppy. So normally I don't really pay attention to small details because I don't really care so much about how things look as long as they perform good. But I decided this one to go a little bit extra. So if you take a look right here, I put the pieces in a lathe, turn them down to a point before I bent that upper rail of the chassis. Just, that's the only looks, but I don't know. For some reason, I felt like doing that on this build. And as far as weight goes, overall, this thing is actually, I think it feels lighter than a stock cloud. Because even though the material of the chassis is heavier, there's less of it. And then with the slower cradle, I made it a little bit thicker to add a little bit more weight at the bottom here just to offset the shock towers and then on this plate right here nice thing about having a mill if you look underneath right there you can see I milled some material out of this bottom plate so that will save a lot of weight and still be just as strong and then the top side still has a nice flat surface for mounting all the electrical components so now in case you're wondering what I'll be using for a body let me show you Right there. So that's a J Concepts GMC body. I just painted it up and put some cloud decals on it, put the roll bar and the blower. So between this body, the factory bumpers and steering linkage, and then once I paint this chassis black, add a couple more bars and I'll put some Lexan in there, painted black just to kind of fill in the, the gaps and everything. At first glance, it's gonna kind of look like a stock cloud, especially because I'll be rolling the factory cloud wheels and tires. I always like the stock tires better than any of those aftermarkets. I mean, really, there's only so many ways to make a V, but the original tires, to me, they just work awesome. They've, they're durable. And being that the factory tires don't have foams in them, definitely softens the impact after a jump, so that's a plus. So, so far, this build's coming out great. I'm very pleased with everything. Having that CNC mill really speeds things up and makes parts way more accurate. Also, check out the new addition to my family. So this is Porter. Say hi, Porter. Oh, get away from there, buddy. 
So right now, Porter is 12 and a half weeks old. He's a big boy. He's an American bully. So last summer, I lost one of my dogs, unfortunately. Max is an American bully. I love this breed. I have two other dogs, an Akita and an Alaskan Malamute. But these American bullies are awesome dogs. Anybody who knows what these are knows what I'm talking about. So when I say American bully, not to be confused with American bulldog, basically this guy's like a, a pit bull on steroids. Here's what I feed him right here. Abity puppy food. And then I rotate it with origin puppy food. He also seems to like my Sega Genesis a lot. Say hi, Porter. Look at the muscles on that guy. Twelve and a half weeks old, and he's already that much of a beast. He's burned though, too, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you next time, and hit the bell.